Yehova Malak Ola Molamat Yehova Malak Yame Rakis Yehova Gadola Makarian Theos Yehova Yardonai Yehova Elohim Kurios Theos Panta Greta Kurios Theos Pistos Elda et Yehova Yel Yamuna Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios Otios O Panta Greta Basileos Basileon Kai Kurios Kurion Yehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Geburah El Elohim Israel Jesus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Yumahagion Panta Greta Gadol Gadol Geburah Yehova Ishmal Kam, Yehova Shamma, Yelnakum Yehova, Elnakum Yapa, Natsak Israel, La Sheker, Gava Gava, Triembos Yehova, Jesus Christos, Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura, Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim, Ilayla e Shalot, Yehovah Malak, Yehovah Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gebura, Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura Derek Emunabakar, Meshvat Shab The Megalogae of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing in our lives what might be a greatest pleasure or a greatest satisf satisfaction our greatest peace when your soul, body and spirit thinks it is in a state of extreme equilibrium. Greater than that, if you have that sort of feeling, or to use the word, that sort of gratification towards performing the will of Lord God the Father, the present Christendom wouldn't have been in such an apostate stage. In fact, your lives wouldn't have been so much rotten. In Job chapter 36, in verse number 8, the word of Lord God records to the exhortation to teachers why these people perishing 
without having the true purpose of life in this church age. So dear brethren, in Job chapter 36, in verse number 8 through verse number 13 or 15, we can easily understand that if we don't have great joy to fulfill the will of Lord God the Father, as you think in this world for some, the physical lust or whatsoever they think, it's the greatest fun they can have, a privilege of excitement, to use the word, what they can have. In comparison to those terms, if they're not able to fulfill the greatest will of God the Father, having greater desire than what great fulfillment or great craving they may have to this flesh. If they don't have that desire, they're going to be, as the terms expounded over here, in Job chapter 36, verses 8 through verse number 14. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of His Word. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to learn the truth. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message, which are prepared and kept for us. On today's day, in to pass to the praise of your glory. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Job 36, in verse number 8, he said, And if they be bound in fetters, and be holden in cords of affliction, then he showed them their work, and the transgressions that they have exceeded. And he doesn't stop there just by showing. The word records, he opened up also their ear to discipline, and commanded that they return from iniquity. In verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. They shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. The verse in Nate, what we look over here, and if they be bound in fetters, the word bound over here, it is called as asar. And the word bound is nothing but to be like imprisoned. And where they're imprisoned, they're imprisoned not to renovate the standards of the thinking. So he says, if they're imprisoned not to carry their cross every day, if they're imprisoned not to come and look into the mind of Christ every day, and where they're imprisoned, the word says in fetters. The word fetters is called to be zika. And the word over here, it is like the misael or the firebrand, the flaming arrow. So if they're having such sort of things which are not making them to become above the thinking of this world, as Ephesians 6 he emphasizes, put upon the breastplate of righteousness so that you can escape the fiery darts of Satan. That's what it is called to be as Misael or Zika. The word Zika is translated in the English as fetters. The same thing in Ephesians 6, we look, be not worried about the fiery darts of Satan, where Satan is about to post upon you the missiles of fear, missiles of negligence, missiles of arrogance, missiles of not knowing after death what is your life in eternity. So he says in verse 8, if they be bound, if they have been prisoned in such missiles, and be holden in cords of affliction, the word cords is called as lakad. So the word holden first, not uh, that one, lakad, holden, meant to say lakad. So where they're holden up? They're holden up in their entire life not to become disciple, 
they are holding up in their entire life not to grow up into grammar tears. They are holding up in their entire life so that they are not able to get every thought into captivity for Christ. That's very simple logic in the mind of the Lord. They are holding up. Lakad meant to say what? They are not knowing that they should be born again as disciples. They are not realizing they should grow up into Kramatiyas. They are not understanding that every thought they have to get into captivity for Christ. That's Lakad. So they have holden up in such a life where in cords of affliction, the word cords over here called to be Kebel, C-H-E-B-E-L, which is called to be like a rope. And this Kebel, if you would look, dear brethren, it meant to say, the wall of fortification in their body is far away from discipleship program. Why affliction will come? Afflictions will come for them, those who are not disciples, to the word of God. Because you people are not able to realize in the church age, without being disciples, you are not even called to be Christians in the Lord. So the cords which are leading you, the cords of affliction, the wall of fortification in such a way, that your entire thought process in your body is not and never disciple-oriented. That is what he says. They are having a life which is away from discipleship orientation. So when these people they have been stuck up in such kebel, in such ropes, he claims the ropes of affliction. The word affliction is called as oni, meant to say misery. What is that misery? Their viewpoint of life doesn't have the vigor and valor which you can dig and take every day from the word of the Lord. When Christ our Lord of a God said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds the thought of the mouth of the Lord of a God, your real vigor, your real viewpoint, your real strength of your body is nothing but as a man thinketh, so he is. So your renovated standards of your thinking in the exegetical word, that's what your real life is. The true life for a believer, the true strength for a believer. That's what he says. Affliction begins when your viewpoint of life is not able to go back and dig and take every day the word of the Lord. So the vigor and valor is lost because your viewpoint of eye is not focused, is not fixed upon Bible doctrine. That's very simple, dear brethren. So when you have been saying that you have been stuck up in the cords of affliction. In simple terms he says, when these people they have been stuck up, they present themselves in fetters. The word fetters we read called to be as zike, meant to say in the firebrands or the missiles of satanic strategy. When these men they have been present themselves in such satanic strategy, and they have been holding up the word lakad. The word lakad meant to say their entire viewpoint of life is far away from discipleship program. Their entire viewpoint of life is far away to grow up into grammar tears. Their entire viewpoint of life is not to get every thought into captivity for Christ as a disciple in the Lord's plan. So that's what he says lakad. They hold on back in cords. What are those cords? Kebel. Because the wall of fortification is in such a way that their every facet in the soul of the body is far away from discipleship program. That's what how Satan weakens of the nations. We have been reading from Isaiah 14 in verse number 12. How does Satan weaken you? It weakens you because you are not able to have in you the thought process or a building up of wall process according to a discipleship program. When you don't have that, you have lost it. And that's what it happens for us day by day. So, dear brethren, disciples are true Christians. Being trained for more than one year, the disciples were called true Christians. Because Satan plays such a strategy in your life that it can give you any pleasure, anything in this earth, but not the word of God. Therefore, we have been telling to you, as your soul, spirit, and body can get satiated with the great pleasures of this flesh, whatsoever it may be, including from your right woman, or the things pertaining you may say, 
if I take that dope, then I will be having a great fun in me or great excitement in me, whatsoever it is. Any pleasure, whichever you may think, either good or bad. There can never be any great pleasure on this earth which you can get, or to use the word kick, which you can get that kick from that pleasure apart from doing and performing the will of God and apart from His word. There will be no great pleasure for you. Therefore, Satan knows very well. Bound them up in their fetters. Put your fiery missiles. That's what we read over here in Ephesians chapter 6, where with Apostle Paul talking about the entire panoply of this armor, what we have to bear and stand before the presence of Lord God the Father. He says in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the entire panoply of God. That's what he says. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Again, the word wiles is called to be methodoia, cunning craft, deceitful things, trickery things of this slanderer. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against the principalities and against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. The word having done meant to say, Katar Gizomai, wherewith he says the same thing in Ephesians chapter 4, emphasizing the point, till all could come to the perfection of the knowledge of God. Again, the word perfection over there is called the standards of Katar Gomai. So, dear brethren, till you are having done the will, having done to stand. Stand therefore, having your lions grid about with truth, having a breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The word fiery, purao, meant to say to burn with fire, and the word darts is nothing but like missile, the same thing what we're reading from Job 36.8. Here been translated for fetters, it has to be as a missile. So he says, the people over here in Job 36 in verse number 8, they're prisoned with the missiles or the fiery darts of Satan. Therefore, how you have to overcome them? He says in verse number 16, when you are taking, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench, the word quench over here called to be sebu nemi, which is to extinguish all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the remote declaration of Bible doctrine. That means all the time the five defensive weapons followed by one offensive weapon which has been given for man on this earth. So the same thing he says in Job 36, 8, if they're binding you up, if they've been prisoned you up in the fiery darts of Satan, then where is your great weapon of righteousness, the shield of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, wherewith you can withstand, we can put to end, we can put to death. In order to put to death, we find the explanation in verse number 7. He says, He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with the kings they are on the throne. Yes, he doth establish them and forever, them forever, and they are exalted. Because he says in verse number 5, God is Keboraeth, he is mighty, and he disdaineth not, he despiseth not, he did not count them to be as ma'as, or melting them out, but rather he claims them, he, 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 he despiseth them not, but rather he is towards those heart men, or the men whose heart is having this vigor and valor, or the loyalty, who are having the same gebe or strength. So he emphasizes the mighty strength called to be gebe or koach strength. And we expounded the word koach. You may resemble to become the will of Lord God the Father, or you may turn out to become like a chameleon on this earth. So in verse number two he says, Suffer with me a little, and I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. 
And he says, I will fetch my knowledge from afar off. I will ascribe my righteousness to my maker. For truly my word shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. The word perfect, tamiyamim, the one who has been called to be in the standards of becoming perfection. The one who has been with us, we have been told in First Corinthians chapter 14 in verse number 20, in understanding be men, but you have been told in malice, quit you like men, be children. Because he says, the word of Lord God in Colossians 4.12 or 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17 as well, that you have to reach the perfection, the prayer, what they're praying over here. In Colossians 4.12, he says, Apapas, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete, perfect and complete in all the will of God. Today, there are no such prayers to be heard in our pulpits. Because the minister is not able to be perfect and complete in teaching the fear of Lord God to the church. But what Epaphras prays, he's praying that he has to show forth to the world through the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the perfect wisdom of the word of the Lord. So he says in Job chapter 36 in verse number 4, For truly my word shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. And then he's searching for those men whose hearts are absolutely following the Geboyor Kovach strength, the Geboyor Kovach heart, the vigor of a heart which works according to the will of Lord God the Father. And then he says in verse 6, He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor, the one who are humble enough, the one who's, who humbles himself, not exalteth himself, but humbleth himself to become the word of Lord God. God the Father is with them. And then he says in verse 7, Because he humbleth himself before the word of Lord God, he withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with the kings are they on the throne, Yes, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. But if you are still, still not able to come out, to become and to carry your cross, come out and work the will of Lord God the Father. Come out and perform the glory of Lord God the Father. He says in verse number 8, If they are still prisoned in the fiery darts of Satan, that meant to say what they haven't put to come, what battle is going on, the battle which has not been with the flesh and blood, but with the principalities, the powers, the rulers and authorities of these unseen forces. So these things are very, very important for us. How we have been still prisoned for the fiery darts of Satan, because in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, you haven't put till now the entire panoply of God. You know, that's your armor sword. It may not be visible, but the invisible armor suit, every time you need to be well prepared because Satan goes on to fire your head. Satan comes to fire your heart, which is the chest. Satan comes to weaken up your lions. Satan comes to see that your footsteps are not being arranged with the gospel of the word of God as shoes to be worn. Because on this earth, men may have a lot many shoes, a lot different kinds of shoes to say that we are having so many shoes. Because stupid men, they love to keep that even in the WhatsApp status, which I saw yesterday. A variety and different kinds of shoes. But the invisible shoes, what you need to wear, preparing your feet with the gospel of the word of God. This is very, very important, which is lacking now in our pulpits the shoes which they ought to wear, the shoes which they ought to be every time. Because first your head shall not be destroyed, put on the helmet salvation. In order to put on your head or put on your helmet upon your head or put on the breastplate upon your chest, you have to have first the vigor and valor in your lions. The lion should wake you up. For example, a man is sleeping. If he's half bent, you know very well he has to lift up. So where does the strength happen? It is in the lion. It is in this portion where you tie your belt. So the very first thing he says, begin up tying the truth to your belt or to your lions. If that is not strong enough, then you cannot wear your head of helmet. If that is not strong enough, you cannot have the breastplate. If that is not strong enough, you cannot operate your legs, which should be put upon the shoes of gospel in the Lord. 
So what are the things he explains in simple terms? First, strengthen up your lions with the word of the Lord. Put upon your lions with Bible doctrine. That is the key. If your lions are not good, for example, you can look a very heavy weightlifting man. They love to try to put a belt upon their lions because body can bend. For example, like a 90 degrees angle, it can bend. If you're following your yoga practices perfectly, you may try to bend it up for zero degrees as well. So where is the key? Where is the main junction which the body can bend? It is the back. Or it is this lions where you have been griddled up with the strength. And Satan doesn't want that to operate in you. Therefore, we look in Isaiah chapter 14, in verse number 15, this word. It should actually perplex your thought. It says in verse 15, You shall be brought low down to the hell, to the sides of the pit. So here the word side is nothing but your brethren called to be Ereka. And what is that word Ereka, the extreme part? It says the thing, the reproductive organs of a male, including the lower abdomen, which are always covered. So when we say over here, the head followed by the palm of a hand in the pictographical representation, meant to say man has been covered, the reproductive organ of a male, including the lower abdomen, which are always covered, so Satan has been hurled down to the sides of the pit. That meant to say what? First, it doesn't have anywhere now the access to get greater information from the Lord of a God to look into his omniscient knowledge. So that is lost. The extreme parts where you're going to get actually get your strength, your ability, your power. That strength, that ability, that power should be all the time in the standards of your lions where you grit the truth. So he says... The word from Yereka into Bor. So if you're not having that Yereka, that is what to have your reproductive organs or the strength in your lions to be absolutely for the will of the Lord, to produce more, to beget more. If you don't have that, then you're going to become like Bor. The word Bor over here, it is called as the cistern, like a dungeon, like a pit where you will fall. Because you are going to be in the standards of scribes, but you are not able to really renovate your thinking further. So, you know, just becoming like a scribes is just not enough. Going and manifesting the power of scribe, showing to the world the real thing of the scribe. Therefore, in Matthew 23, 34, the great purpose why Christ our Lord of God said, I'm going to send my scribes. My wise men, my prophets, because he doesn't want the category of these people who are scribes, who are like Yareka, and who are into dungeons, bore. They have renovated their heads like scribes. They don't have now the access of really making up the lions to be grit with truth. Since they don't have that, they're going to end up in pits, in dungeons, because their uh, work of scribal authority in going and making disciples or in going and making to live a life of thinking of the Word of God, they don't have. You might have reached the stage of writing the Word of God, you might have finished it, and that finished Word of God, if it is not reigning in you, if it is not ruling in your mind, then it's as good as you have been put into pit. So, dear brethren, the words what Christ our Lord our God wants in Matthew 20 to 34 is that we have to be the walking scribes. So here we find that Satan cannot really have access in the standards if you are really becoming a grammatious level of thinking. So he says, dear brethren, in this great chapter of Job 36, emphasizing the point that they have lost the Ereka word. 
Why? Because you may be having the power to become like the standards of greeting your lions with the truth. Satan now it knows very well it cannot go to grid though it has the lion, the, the strength in the lions to grid the truth. It goes on not to renovate now. It doesn't have any further access as such we have no access in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to learn the great and deep things of the word of the Lord. By learning the great and deep things of the word of the Lord of God as stated in Ezekiel 1 through 9, 28 chapter verses 1 through 19, particularly 9th and 10th verse, the alien seed which Lord God the Father has commanded, they will come to pass. And what they do, they will slay you into pieces. Because now the church age is given a greater access to strengthen the lions of them through the word of Lord God being renovated every day. But Satan now he doesn't have the taxes. It has been stopped. Therefore, we find this First Peter 1.12 which says that the angels are rubbernecking to look what exactly the churches are able to teach. Because the doctrine what we are learning is not just the standards where you are able to look and some of the silly points of morality or silly points of this life what you are going to live as a pious or a godliness. But the life what you're going to look even, the words of Lord God, what we find to be expounded in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Satan do not have access beyond to become like a scribe, but have been given an access to beyond to become greater than a scribe, to be like a cherubium level of thinking in your mind. You have been given something great. You have been given something unique. Therefore, the angels are rubbernecking to look what exactly the pulpits are able to teach. The sad part is today, the pastor teachers are not even able to fulfill the desires of the fallen angels when they're rubbernecking and they're trying to look what exactly you teach today in the pulpit. Because you come weekly once and you don't renovate in the word of God, you don't have so much of time to execute the passages, so what great deep things you can take. So Satan knows to the most what he can give to them, give them to the sheer rate of level of thinking like morality, like being good, like having your good nature like the fig leaves are fair and just end them up. Because they are not been sent by the Lord. If they have been sent by the Lord, we were reading yesterday much exhortation of Acts chapter 20 in verse number 2, much and great exhortation. And what we have read there, not only just much and great exhortation, thought in thought process. When the talk was great, where they were still going to teach many things. When he was expounding the word in a great depth standards. A thought in thought process, what he was teaching to them. The great many things when Apostle Paul was teaching, Eutychus fell to slip. Greater in quantity, because the quality is superior. Since the quality is superior, it was greater in quantity. He was teaching to them thought in thought process, word by word process. And since he has taught them every day thought in thought process, word by word process, really we have something great of a thing which we need to enjoy. The great access what we get, the great thinking what we have. But we are not able to do that because the church has become slumbered. So what does Satan do? Give them only simple things. Though the angels are rubbernecking to look, why the passage in First Peter chapter 1 in verse 12, they say that the angels are also rubbernecking to look what exactly the word of Lord God has been taught because they don't have access now. Erecha, Bo, Isaiah 14, 15, their access has been completely stopped. Therefore, dear brethren, the lions which you tie up, reading it with truth, the lions what you are having, they have been given for the purpose, for a man to bend, for a man to have strength, for a man to wake up, for a man to walk. Because many men might have researched that there is some sort of a magical power in this body, wherewith this man is able to wake up, this man is able to bend, this man is able to walk, this man is able to lift up. In all these things, if you just look some of the books being written by some of the men, they try to explain what is the strength in these lions, where you end up with this backbone and the pelvic bone, where you are going to join up there. So he teaches there many things, many great things. So the very first thing what Satan wants is that don't grid up your lions with the truth. 
If you're not having that strength to walk, if you're not having that strength to wake up, if you're not having that strength to do the things of basic necessary things of this law, if you just see a man who's been bedridden, the problem, he says, because of his backbone damage, just look what a heck of a life he has. Satan just wants to spoil you there in your backbone, in your strength, because already Satan knows very well he doesn't have further access to look the great and deep things of the word of Lord God, but God is so gracious for us. We should be so much thankful to the Lord He has given us to eat the hidden manna, to enjoy the true life, to enjoy the true thinking of Christ. He has given us something great which Satan all the time coveted or desired or longed for. They have been given something of a great access. Every time you have been told, come and take the word of God, strengthen up your lions, grid up your lions, and then if you're going out, if anyone would damage you from above, put on the helmet of salvation. If there is anyone, they're going to put a missile upon your chest, put upon the breastplate of righteousness. If Satan wants to go on to be firing out the fiery darts, he said, take upon the shield of faith and put upon for your leg, what do you call, the the shoes, the gospel of peace. That's what the entire panoply which every believer has to put in the Lord. But where has been stuck up, he says in Job 36, 8, he has been bounded or imprisoned in his own fetters, missiles of Satan. And when he's been missiled, when he has been put bound in his own missiles of Satan, he's not able to learn further the truth. He's not able to learn further the thinking. He's not able to learn further the standards of his word. So he is not able to grid up his lions. So what does he do? What is the use of having your helmet? What is the use of having your breastplate or shield of faith or having the sandals of your shoes to your leg when they're not able to wake up and go and perform the will of Lord God the Father? So what is the use if you have all those things and no strength in the lions? So he says the key, the beginning is what you find in the strength of your lions. Erekabor. So Satan has been stopped of the taxes. Satan cannot have that access furthermore what we have the omniscient knowledge of his God the omniscient knowledge what we have been given access what we learn and dig and take of the hidden manna day by day that hidden manna what we are digging and taking will make Satan to linger along what we are able to preach first Peter 1 12 to look great many things in the Bible so what does Satan do he doesn't send shepherds after Lord God's own heart. He destroys the church by sending men who have come for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. It goes to give you the cheap substitutes. It goes to say, have pleasure in your flesh. Don't compare that pleasure when you fulfill the pleasure of the word of Lord God. So what you do if a man wants to have, for example, many things, a drunkard fellow, in order to make his the satisfaction of his belly with the drunk with the drinking of what he's going to drink or the alcohol what is going to fill up, he would love to do anything for it. Even if it would cost him only thirty rupees or forty rupees, he just goes on to even if it has been needed to lie, even if it has been needed to rob. Because it's a very psychopathic condition of these people. They go to such extreme level. Because they just want to have the pleasure of their life to be fulfilled for that day, no matter what. For that cause they love to work, for that cause they love to do, to act. Because they just want to fulfill the desire of their flesh. That's what their life is, they just love to fulfill the desire of their flesh. And they think that's enough. And they think they really achieved it by doing lot many things which are contrary to the word of God. So if a man is thinking this is the desire, if a man is thinking this is the pleasure, then Satan says, let them be in that pleasure. Let them not come to know the word of God. But Lord God says, what pleasure you think that is more happy for you by doing all such sort of things needed for you to fulfill your lusts, with that great desire of fulfilling your lusts, just try to fulfill my will with that great desire, more than that great desire. 
You'll really be having the access to look what Satan cannot have the access called to be. The fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in learning the word of God, and expounding the great and deep things of his will. Therefore, the angels are abanaking, he said. The angels are eagerly waiting, he said. In Ephesians 3, he writes the same passage, that the pastor teacher is the dean. Every believer is a professor to the fallen angels to teach the Lord's mind, to teach the Lord's glory. And every believer, when they come to learn the Lord's wisdom, the manifold wisdom of God. Therefore, the great privilege given to the pastor teacher in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, till all could come into the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. It's a real great privilege, dear brethren, which has been not understood through this life on this earth. Because the pleasure what you think is more needed for drinking or for robbing or for anything, whatever you think, that's the pleasure. For sons of Belial, it's a pleasure not to have in their body to be disciple-oriented or not to have their eyes to be disciple-oriented. That's what they are being called to be Belial sons. For them, it's a pleasure, sons of worthlessness. For Christians today, to act hypocritical level of thinking by taking the name of Christ in vain, it's a pleasure. For every man they have some pleasure. Whatsoever the pleasure for some to be idle, for some to be slumber, for some to be lazy, for some to just eat, drink and enjoy, that's a pleasure. But they're not constrained in the thinking to become, to bind over to the Word of God and to become disciples, growing up into grammatias, to take the first step. Because it's a strain for them to carry the cross every day. And the cross is not the little cross what Christ our Lord of God carried, though it was being handed over to Simon the Syrian to continue in his role. The cross, what it meant to say, daily you have your difficult portion to take it. When you were a child, you love to reason like a child. When you grow up, you let go of the childish things, isn't it? If you're still looking for the childish things, even though you have been grown up, people will think you're psych. The Christendom of the church age has to reach its puberty, but it hasn't yet reached its puberty. Because they have not grown up in the Word of God. So for everything, you just look. You might be engaging yourselves into the flesh. You might be engaging into the yourselves for the pleasures. But you have to get yourselves to be well occupied to carry your cross. The cross of becoming grammatias, the cross of sitting and calculating the time. When the face of the Lord of God has been shown upon us, when it shines upon you, he says, he will teach his ways. And the nations are waiting for the deliverance of the saving health of his deliverance to be made known. The nations are waiting for it. The nations are looking for it. How simple it is that the nations are waiting for it. That they're waiting for actually the deliverance which God the Father has given to us when He's shining His face. But you have not looked into the shining face of the Lord because you're not learning the word of the Lord. To learn the word of the Lord every day, you need to carry up your cross and follow my Lord. But you're not even looking upon what is the burden of the cross which you need to carry every day. Dear brethren, if your lions are not been gripped up or strengthened up with the truth, when you don't have your, your, your back proper or having enough strength in your backbone, no other activities could be done. Just look what a man can do to the best. A backbone is like a hinges. Wherewith you fold up your legs, you lift up your body of the chest. If a backbone, if this doesn't act like a hinges, if you have a six hole or eight hole hinges in your hand, you can understand, which you put to the doors or to the windows. The way how it operates, the middle point of that, some has been attached to the firmly to the wood and some to the door. So what happens? It opens and it closes. The same thing, your backbone operates in such way. 
the lower part of the legs, the above from the backbone of that what you call this this uh, this pelvic joint or lion's joint. From there above, you have your body where you bend, you compress. That's the key point where you bend. So if that is not having proper strength, you cannot lift up your legs. You cannot go to look upon the affairs of your upper part of the body. So Satan knows very well to destroy that strength. Therefore, daily, don't carry your cross. Therefore, daily, don't come to learn the word of God. Therefore, daily, don't do anything that which is the good pleasure, but you enjoy your pleasures. You enjoy the pleasures of the lustful patterns of your old sin nature in whichever way you want. For some drug addiction, for some drunkardness, for some adultery, for some having to think he can have a lot of money on this earth, that is called to be the, the, the lust of money. So whatsoever it is, just engage them in those respective lusts. Let them enjoy the pleasure at the cost of not fulfilling the pleasure or the goodwill of God the Father in heaven. If there is anyone who would consider God, if there is anyone who would love to perform His will, if there is anyone who would do the great good pleasure of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He claims. But there were none who could stand in the gap. But now it's a high time for us to awake, to stand in the gap. It's a high time for us to learn the thinking of the Lord. It's a very, very high time for us to realize what exactly is the will of God the Father. It's a very high time. Because Satan is not being given now further access. The best what it can do, it can think upon in the standards of Eureka. It can stop not to go back to take up the process of digging and taking day by day the word of God so that there could be no more production of Bible doctrine. That's what Satan can do the best in your life. Because it has been limited. But you have been given unlimited access to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been given the unlimited prayer of Paul Timor privileges. Therefore, the fallen angels as well as the head of the fallen angels, Lucifer, they are rubbernecking to look. What are you going to teach every day? They don't have the access what we have today. Therefore, the first thing what they do, don't grit up your lions. You may be thinking you're having a helmet of salvation. You may be thinking you may be having a breastplate of righteousness. You may be thinking you're having the shield of faith or having your feet shorted with the gospel of peace. But without having proper strength being rooted in you, you cannot. Just ask anything or just look practically in your way of life what a man anthropos is all about. If he doesn't have enough strength in his lions, he cannot go for anything. He cannot even go for reproduction as well. Hebrew school of thought. No strength in the lions, you can't do anything. Therefore, the first target of Satan, break up the strength of your lions. Don't grit up true. Don't come to carry your cross every day and learn the word of God. That's the key. That's the only source wherewith we can easily overcome Satan and the strategy of Satan on this earth. And we can easily laugh at the mocking will of Satan. That's what we have been reading from Psalms 127 in verse number 2, where it is said, Our mouth will fill with laughter. What is that laughter? No matter what may be the pressure on this earth, they came back to take in the word of Lord God day by day to be built up in the standards of Lord's mind. So every day they did it. But if you're not going to do that every day, Lamentations 3.14 teaches, you will become a song in the midst of these fallen angels. You will become a song for those people. They will laugh at you. They will mock at you. They will ridicule at you. Because they are going to say before God the Father, Are these the men whom you have appointed, Lord, to take over us? Are these the people who are going to be against us to stand in the judgment? Are these the people they will be having the throne established by you? Or as you have commanded, the Lord has spoken, it will come to pass of Ezekiel 28, 9 and 10. Are these the people? Because they are not filling up their mouth every day with the word of God. How do you think they are going to work out against us? That's what Satan claims. The fallen angels of Satan think on behalf of you. Because Satan is very, very cunning. It knows very well it has been doomed forever into eternal lake of fire. It tries to impugn, challenge the character of God. And God the Father makes man this lower than the angels. 
having no wings to resolve this angelic conflict. And Satan now tries to make fall of this man, to entice him and to make him to fall. The enticement process is running now in the church age when the people are heeding for miracles or healings or tongues, but they're not heeding to grow up into grammatias, that's what. But Satan as well at the same time, it cannot have access above the scribes. But Lord God the Father said, you are thinking your standard of your base is first a scribe. From there you are going to become wise man. From there you are going to become a prophetic one. Your basic thing, your basic qualification is a scribe where Satan cannot have access to renovate the things of the Lord's glory in it any longer. Because we have been given great many things to access. Why? Because of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And therefore Satan is nothing. Therefore Lord God the Father says, Trample down Satan under your feet. Therefore Apostle Paul says, We are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. Why we should worry about it? The only one thing you have to be careful, do not let go your time into the lusts of this world. Every day carry your cross. Every day learn the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Every day perform that which is right and good in the will of Lord God the Father. Every day, every day do it. Every day, that's our privilege. Every day. Actually, Satan should tremble because you are still alive on this earth. At your presence on this earth, Satan should tremble. That's a great power what we have today given for us to be having indwell by the Trinity in us. Powerless people are worrying and fearing about Satan in this life. Satan doesn't have access to what you have. You have been given the access to go and further dig greater than a scribe. You have been given great access to enjoy the Lord's mind every day, every point, every second, every breath. So Satan knows not to make up your alliance to be gridded with truth because it knows very well it cannot go further to access the truth. So when your alliance are not been gridded with truth, then everything fails. No helmet of salvation, so Satan can put upon the fiery darts upon you. No breastplate of righteousness, so that Satan can easily fire you out. No shield of faith in your hand, so that the imprisonment of the fetters of Satan can work in you. No gospel of feet, no, no, gospel, no shoes of gospel to your feet because the purpose of your feet is what you have to go and preach the gospel you have to make up the will of Lord God the Father to shine through you but that is locked that is not done because you don't have the strength in order to have the strength your lions should be great the word of Lord God which has been given for us it emphasizes that if you have been really graduating in the word of Lord God, God the Father being a Kebior one, is on behalf of those Kebior Kovach one to prove that their hearts are also loyal and he doesn't put upon them any affliction. You laugh at the calamities. Not that, as the word says by rejecting the word of God in Proverbs chapter 3, 4 and 5, that when your calamity comes, or chapter 1 as well, when your calamity comes, he laughs at you. But now you laugh at the calamity of the plans and the strategies of Satan upon your life because you have been strengthened up with the Lord's glorious Kovach strength to be a Gebor man growing up into Grammatias and learning great many, deep many things from the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, what you do, you laugh, you, you, you ridicule, you mock. You make fun of because every time you put the word of Lord God in you, your mouth is being filled with laughter. Psalms 127 2, uh, 126 2, and you make fun of because the nations are awaiting for the saving help. Because Lord of a God uh, maketh his face to shine upon us. So when he's making his face to shine upon us, for sure the nations are awaiting for the manifestation of their adult sons, he says in Romans 8.16. So we shall be those men to, to give access to the word of Lord God and make known to these people the importance of this word of Lord God, which has been so much essential for us in this church age to be made known. So dear brethren, the great access what we have day by day, the great privilege what we have breath by breath, if it has been neglected, if it has not been done according to the will of the Lord, lions will be not strengthened. When the lions are not been strengthened, Satan is having a great access to completely destroy you.
That's what Satan can do the best, to destroy you. It doesn't go to look anything further from that, just to destroy you. It doesn't have any access if you're having strength in your lions. You laugh, you mock, you ridicule at the calamities of Satan. Because when you have once passed the test to grow up into grammatias, from the level of high above the grammatias, you're going to have the thinking of Caribbean standards. You dig and take much more information from the Word of God, greater information from the knowledge of Bible doctrine, which Satan doesn't know that. So what does Satan do? It loves to rub on every time the pulpit and it loves to listen what is there. But you have been given access to learn greater, 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 because grid up your lions with the truth. Therefore, in Job chapter 36, he says, in verse number 8, says that, If they be bound in fetters, that is, by the javelins of Satan, the missiles of Satan, and they have been holden up in cords of affliction, why the word lakad has been used? There have been not disciples growing up into grammatists to get every thought into captivity for Christ. When this is happening, then for sure they are being uh, holden up in the cords of affliction. Why you get affliction? Because you are not disciple oriented. Therefore, we have been reading from Isaiah 14, 13, the five evils, wherewith we look, where does Satan have its dominion? It has dominion on the category of the people who don't have access to become grammatias. Below the level of the rank of grammatias, Satan has dominion. That's what it says. It has been now corded up or it has been bonded up. Where? Into the lakad standards of cords. What is that cords? The Hebrew word over here it has been called for us as kebel. So what is that cords? Your wall of fortification in your body doesn't make to be disciple orientation to the will of the Lord. That's what the word cord is all about. So those cords, that axis is gone. If that axis is gone, you know very well what is going to become your life. You don't mean born again because if you're not having an access to be a disciple, you're not even born again in the Lord. Because John 1 to well emphasizes, to them he gave the power to, to become the sons of God, exudes authority, those who receive upon him. And the word technon in the Greek goes to say disciple. And that discipleship program has been not done in you, then you're not at all a Christian, therefore you lose access. So first of all, you're going to lose all the taxes. Your cord has been broken up. That is what you have, don't have the umbilical cord of relationship with Lord God, that great and upright relationship with Lord God. When you don't have that great and accurate relationship with Lord God, then for sure you're going to end up in the details of life to search for silly solutions. The solutions which are not even worthy to be thought of. You just go to have your access in the silly solutions of this life. Everything you look, you look to have only silly solutions. And that's how it happens. In that silly solutions of your life, you're thinking, why God is testing me? Because you're not even becoming to be as a disciple. And the churches are not emphasizing that. Till you could go out from the standards of disciple into scribal level of authority, till that time Satan rules. But when once you have passed the stage of this scribal authority and you're going ahead marching to become a cherubim level of thinking, Satan knows very well it cannot even access you. Because you're going to now have great deep things from the word of the Lord. Till you could pass that stage of scribal level of authority, Satan tries to afflict. Satan tries to say, why are you going to waste your time by writing the Bible? Why are you going to be like this? You know, just look how many people may be writing the word of God as scribes. But Lord God gives us all the reason in Isaiah 14 verses 12 through 15. Why his New Testament scribes ought to come. Because Yarek robe or Yakera robe, what we read the word, saying that this access what Satan thinks upon is having in the standards of the Old Testament scribes. Therefore, Lord God the Father has made something great of this New Testament scribes. Therefore, he said he's going to send his shepherds. He's going to send his scribes, his wise men, his prophetic word of thought so that the people can have access, access, access. What a great thing we have today to learn. 
When his shepherds have come, they will teach you nothing but the word of God, so that you can go on to have access to be far greater than the Old Testament scribes or the scribes of Matthew 23 chapter. The Lord God the Father goes to reprimand them. The New Testament scribes having something great enough in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit called to be a sky in equality. The Old Testament scribes may not have been in well permanently by Lord God the Holy Ghost except certain few. Whenever they would come upon them, they would go and then if not, including the prophets. But Moses longed for it. But now in the church age you are of a great quality, something near. 24 hours, wherever you have been led in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the day you begin to believe in the Lord, from the day till you die, it is absolutely fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It's a permanent access. How to illustrate that? In the four or five decades back, having internet access was very difficult. But now you can look everywhere you go. You can ask even to your fellow friend kindly on your hotspot so that I can have some access with you. So now everyone has his own data. For example, 2 GB of data, 3 GB of data in the smartphone. So now there is no lack of having the standards of internet for you so that you can simply access it. But when you look back into the 40 or 50 years back or 4 or 5 decades back, you look, it was very difficult for them to have access as we are having access now in the internet. There would be very few people who would go to cross check and they go on to look upon the WWW concept, a world wide web. It was very difficult, but now you can just go and look upon the Google or a Chrome. You can get everything. You're going to have access. You know, the point what I want to illustrate, the Old Testament scribal authority or the men who have been indwelled by the Holy Ghost were like that four or five decades back of internet access. Very certain men who had. But now when you come to the New Testament, as you're going to look now, the present smartphone technology with the standards of your key features of data connectivity, or data access what you have minimum 1 GB one day again for the standards of minimum 10 GB per day whatever depends upon the data pack what you have posted on that so you have continual access whenever you need you can have access because some people they are so crazy to cross check every time whatever they want to look it is not the call list how many missed calls or how many received calls or how many dialed calls they just have the habit of going on putting to data connectivity on and they just mentally, because it has been already put into their brain, the brain reads it so clearly. They just go to the point where it is having to the access of WhatsApp or Instagram or Facebook or any stupid thing of sort of status. They just go there and in order to go there, if there is offline, they know very well they need to own it automatically first. Now you have your online payments, everything crediting your salary like these things what these people they are using in the world. So they just have access. In everything they have the taxes. They know very well. They're very smart. They're smart than the smart people. So in order to have the taxes, what you do is just put upon your smartphone button to data connectivity. And if you can give a three-year-old girl, she has been so curiously absorbing the things. She knows very well where is that red icon where she wants to look into YouTube so that she can watch some uh, things pertaining to her cartoons. So no need for the parent to guide them because so greatly the brain has been uh, involved in that. The point what I want to tell is very simple, dear brother. You have such an access now in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in this church age. 24 by 7, what the people would say for a week. But 24 till the day you die, when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, till the day you die, you have been given the access to be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Ghost, so that you can go back further and dig great many things from the Bible and become the New Testament scribes with, he said in Matthew 20 to 34, I will send my scribes. I will send my wise man. That's the next level of thinking. I will send my prophetic word kind of a man because it is not now to tell something in the future events it would happen, but tell these people what exactly is in the word of God and tell that though the heaven and the earth will vanish over, but his word abideth forever. How to illustrate that? For example, in the life of Apostle Paul, on the case of Epaphroditus, his dear beloved friend, he did not heal him, but when the completed authority was been established, he just prayed for him. The same thing when if you look today, the word of Lord God says, the much teaching, exhortation of much word of God has to be given for you in your pulpits. But these people, they're not able to look of much exhortation with the work of the pastor teacher. They're just able to look the gimmicks of miracles or healings or tongues. So here we have a very simple example to illustrate how much and till where you have been fallen from the grace of God. 
So Lord God, the Holy Ghost goes to give you right information every time. Look into the Bible. What does it say? Come back and learn the Bible. Access the Bible. What does it say? But these people, they're not at all happy to access the Bible. Where is the much exhortation of the will of God the Father? They don't look. But here now, something kind of quality, something new which not exists earlier. And under this kind of quality, he says, every day carry your cross, every breath by breath. If ever you breathe, he says in Galatians 5, you have to be in the spirit. If ever you walk, it has to be in the spirit. Therefore, he said in Ephesians 5, be controlled all the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because you are having that control like the data connectivity in your smartphone every time you're having access with Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Every breath you have the taxes. So if you are under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to prove that you are a really true Christian, you will go to learn the renovated standards of his mind because we have been given the work of pastor, teacher, Ephesians 4, till all could come to the unity and to grow up into the mature statute of the thinking of the knowledge of God. In Romans chapter 8, we have been said to conform to the image of God. Why? Because the right work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is to renovate you. The one who indwelleth in you, he has been bearing witness with your spirit, of a human spirit, that you are the children of God, technon children of God. It's so that you can grow up into become the adult children of God. Access you have every day. In fact, indeed, every breath. The same thing what the Old Testament people longed for. They couldn't have what we are having. It was on very certain few, less than 2% of the entire Israelites. The prophets, the temple workers, the kings. And it was like an Iran, whenever there was a work, it is to use them and then it is, and it is to leave them helpless. Just an axis. But now you're having breath by breath fellowship. Then how much more of a great quality you should be, rather than just looking into the recesses of the pit. Just looking into the standards of this earth. How much more access you need to have every day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. How much more? Therefore, the angels are rubbernecking to look what the pulpits are teaching. But angels are so happy not to find good information to be taught. So maybe they're also not rubbernecking the neck. Because when there is right word of Lord God being taught, angels also will learn. Because you're now a professor to the angels, he said in Ephesians 3. And being a professor to the angels, you teach. What do you teach? The polypyclos wisdom of God. And when you're teaching them the wisdom of God, they're realizing what they've lost by not obeying the salvation which God the Father has given to them to be the salvation. Whatsoever angelic salvation, when they rebelled, God might have given to them because God is gracious. They rejected that. So when we learn, when we talk, being lower than the angels, when we teach, when the angels are rubbernecking to look what information has been taught, they regret, they repent. But now there is no standards of salvation for them because God the Father has already passed a judgment and Lord God the Father is not a man to lie nor a human being to change his word so that you can think he's going to grant permission for the one-third fallen angels to come back to heaven. No. Every time what you're enjoying, every time the way you're being faithful to the word of God, every time when you're fulfilling the great commission of Lord God the Father, joined as disciples, growing up into grammatics, every time when you're, when you're making up your life to be a greater pleasure than any pleasure on this earth could be greater for you, the pleasure to be greater than all the pleasures being put together on this earth to fulfill the will of God the Father, if that is the greatest pleasure for you, then every time whenever Satan looks or the fallen angels look, they come to access your life, they find what they have been losing out, what they have been given and what they lost, the same thing what you're acquiring day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every time, every breath, every time, every breath. But what is happening, dear brethren, today in our pulpits? The churches are sound asleep because Satan has made them not to get into access of the Word of God. You're bound up with your own standards of afflictions. The afflictions which are making you to believe that just go weekly once to the church, show forth the standards of your nominal Christendom activities. Just they're trying to do that into utmost things of this earth. And yet these people, they're not able to look how much they are bound up their cords, their cords in affliction. 
because their viewpoint of life has lost the vigor and valor to get access from the word of the Lord. That's what they've lost. So he says now in verse 9, then he showed them their work. That's what we are here being kept alive to shine forth in the midst of this purpose and crooked nation generations that the word of Lord God alone reigneth forever and forever, whether you may hear or forbear. Through our life when we are walking, is we are not only just showing to the human beings, but the acts is what the angels are rubbernecking to look. We are showing to them. We are showing to them their work. We are showing to them what their eye point or viewpoint of life they opened up to be against the discipleship program. We are showing them their work. We are showing them their wages. We are proving them. The word show at medicine, na God. We are declaring to them in the vigor and valor. If we don't declare, then who is going to declare? It is not by the visions or dreams which you are going to get. It is by the constant thorough study of exegetical doctrine in the word of Lord God you are going to declare. So when we are going to declare their work, what we are going to show, we are going to show their work, their wages, what they have done, their viewpoint of life not being associated to be disciple program. Then he says further, the transgressions, the word transgressions called to be pasha, revolting nature. The mouth is not been talking about the thinking process. The viewpoint of life is not talking about the thinking process of the word of God. The transgressions that they have exceeded, what they have exceeded, they became gebor, they became more. They're building up in such a way that their body, they think if they have enough money, that's enough. As we look upon in Revelation 3.17, thinking that you have the money, that's enough. But Lord God says, look, what is your life? He emphasizes over there in Revelation chapter 3, for the standards of those people in verse number 17. He gives over here five different qualities. He said that you know not that you are a wretched. The word wretched is called to be talai, followed by the word uh, Poras, the word Talaton meant to say weighing up in your scales of balance and the word uh, Para meant to say with experience. Just look your life with experience, with the troubles, with the things that have gone through. Just look, you think you are rich and nothing has been needed for you from the Lord God. So he says the afflictions what they have been put is going to show that you have been thinking you are having a great Gabor man of strength and that's enough, you are having enough money to solve your problems. He says no, you are wretched. You have been weighed in the, in the balances of scales. You just look according to your experiences that are going through. Though you have enough money, you don't have peace. Though you have enough money, you don't have the grace of God. So he claims you are wretched, eh? thinking that you might be saying, as in Revelation 3.17, you say that I am rich, I am increased with goods, and I have need nothing of. He says you know not nothing because you are wretched. Eh? And then he says you are miserable. The word miserable over here, what we find, dear brethren, it emphasizes that you are to be shown pity, elilinios. And then he says you are potocast, poor, you are blind, to pass, because you are mentally blind, you are not able to look, and you have been even uh, gumnas. What is the word gumnas? You are naked. So that the soul whose garment is the body, stripped of the body without a body. That's what it is. So that you're not having that garment. You've been absolutely naked. So he says your soul has not been affected with the word of God. So you're naked. You think you're having enough money to solve your problems. But he says, no, that money will not help you because you're absolutely naked. So he showeth your work. He showeth the transgressions. Because you are first of all miserable, you are wretched, you are being poor, you are being blind, you are being in the standards of what you call to be having shown some mercy, called to be naked. The five characters, what he says. Therefore he emphasizes the transgressions of them when I have shown. But these people, they have not realized the transgressions, what it is. When he showed them their work and the transgressions they have exceeded, he openeth also their ear to discipline. He who has in here, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And commanded that they return from iniquity. You know how gracious my Lord God is. 
He shows you. He openeth up your ear to discipline. He commanded that he return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their years in prosperity and the e uh, spend their days in prosperity and the years in pleasure. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. He says in verse thirteen. But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. There is no process of coming humbly to the grace of God, though they go through many difficulties of life. These are hypocrites. When they have been in need of the Lord God, they want a deliverance. When they have been sick of the Lord God, they want to have their sins to be forgiven by the elders being anointing with the olive oil. And when the work is done, they show back the same color, hypocrites. Therefore, he says in verse number 13, These hypocrites, but the hypocrite's heart heap up wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them, and he wants to test them and put back. They don't do it. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. Why they die in youth? Because of the standards, not carrying the yoke and the burden of Lord God, while you have to carry it in this church age. Therefore, dear brethren, you're bound up in fetters, you're holding up in the cords of affliction, then wake up to look. Because Satan knows very well to operate on the minds of those people who will never be disciples of the word of the Lord, who will never grow up into the grammatures of the will of the Lord. The entire kingdom or the empire of Satan is among the people who are not grown up into grammatures. And the people who are grown up into grammatures, they will well become realizing the standards of a wise man. They will well become to the realizing the work of a prophetic word. And they are not worried because they know very well Satan can be easily trampled because they don't have the access. And therefore what we need to preach and teach, we need to preach and teach, showing to these nations what is the will of Lord God the Father, we have to tell to them. What is the great glory of Lord God the Father, showing to them that these people, they have to have an access, thinking to the standards of great glorious work. And when we are living such a life, the fallen angels are Rabbanake, what we have lost. Because we are of something of a great new quality, having 24 hours access into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. Our quality, what we are going through, is something super. Our quality, what we are enjoying, is something great. Our quality, what we are having, is something brilliant. This quality did not exist earlier. The quality, what we are having, is absolutely marvelous. As you have your smartphone to data connectivity, remember that illustration. Anytime you need, you just go on to on your button there, and the thing will be accessed. So it is in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been in the sin, use rebound, get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And 1 John 1 9 is not a license to sin, it is a license to serve Lord. Without that license, you cannot have your access. Without having access, you cannot go to look and entertain yourself into the marvelous pleasures of His Word. There could be no pleasure greater than the pleasure what you can think in this earth. For example, if you have been addicted to porn, if you are addicted to the standards in your smartphone for many other stupid ill things or things which are ill, you'll be just eagerly waiting when to on your smartphone, when to on to go and get on into your data connectivity, isn't it? For example, stupid men who love to have access for putting up in status, they really admire this, they really admire that. You know, all the things, they have the taxes. They'll be just waiting. Who is watching my standards of status? Who is looking into the Facebook? Who is looking into that, into this? You know, you'll be just eagerly waiting now so that you can go and go on into your smartphone, have access of that. Go on into your YouTube, have access of that. Now, how eagerly you'll be waiting to do something. More than that, you should be eager enough to do the will of Lord God, thinking to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using 1 John 1 9. Because 1 John 1 9 is not a license to sin, it is a license to sow back and serve the Lord. Eagerly waiting to get and learn great deep things, great many, many deep things from the Bible doctrine. We have really great access, dear brethren. The access what we are having is absolutely brilliant. And if you neglect the taxes, if you ignore the taxes, if you don't have that access, 
You cannot have fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when you don't have fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, nothing abideth faithful for you. The learning what you learn will be vain. The thinking what you learn will be vain. The understanding what you learn will be vain. Everything will be vain. So, Lord God, the Holy Ghost alone can make the things clear. Lord God, the Holy Ghost alone can give you access to have greater strength in your lives. So do not grieve him, he said, do not squelch him, but rather be controlled of him, breath by breath. If ever you live in the Spirit, you also walk in the Spirit, so that you know, if your every breath, if it is in the Spirit, you will not go to fulfill the lusts of your flesh. The lusts of your flesh is the key or the region where Satan has an access, and Satan knows very well to trample you down if you are not growing up to become grammatious. Because of the lusts of the flesh, you just let go the glory of Lord, and looking upon the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the things of the flesh, you will not grow up into grammatious. But in return, Satan comes up to really cheat you or to make you to be fumbled enough or to be beguiled enough as it has deceived Eve by showing forth the silly stupid things on this earth. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short for us to waste in silly stupid things. We have a lot many access to come back and learn in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the great deep things of the standards of grammatical level of thinking in the Lord's mind. So which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless mouth that's in front and divine glorious grace. So with our head burned eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us so very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great match of in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, where we teach and acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest match is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the Dharma to my witnesses where it have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in building Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not very besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how of the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to understand that the angels are also rubble looking to look upon the pulpit where the right word of God has been taught so that we could rightly reprimand the word of truth and exhort to with much teaching your great real life which you have given for us, which we enjoy, but whereas the fallen angels and the Lucifer do not have the access for it. To this extent, Father, we pray, challenge us by this message and enlighten each and every believer to understand the high holy heavenly calling in the church age by being constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, rather than being fulfilled in the lustful patterns of this flesh and walk out from your grace. So, Father, we commit everything into the mind mighty hands, use us for your glory, such as diligently, you will surely find many offensive ways that you have been gracious unto us, being thankful for the great privilege which you have given to have, to access thy knowledge, thy wisdom, and make known to these people the level after the scribal authority, the things of this wise man, the things of this prophetic word, how great it would be when we walk word by word in that fellowship. This section, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.